Hello, this is Brett from 2techteachers.com. I'm here today to show you a new script that's out for Google Apps called Doctopus. And it's really going to simplify your life when it comes to sharing docs with students. Now, in the past, we would have to create a document template, share it with the students, and then have the students make a copy and share it back with us. Well, this new script is really going to save you a lot of time. So first of all, I've already set up a sample class. So I'll go ahead and open that um, spreadsheet. Now, you want to look at the, the field names. I've got my last name, first name, email, and then there's going to be a, a field called excused, and we'll get into that in uh, just a little bit. Now, what I've done is I've created a master sheet on the bottom. And the reason you want to do that is because every time you create a new document or share a new document with the students, you're going to need to create a new sheet. So instead of having to copy and paste the email addresses all over again or to duplicate the document, it's just easier to have a master. So I'm going to jump back to my drive real quick. And in my sample uh, class here, I've created another folder called Sample Class Assignment Templates. Now, with your naming of the folder, you could just call it Assignment Templates, and since it's nested within the sample class, it would make sense from this standpoint. But my recommendation is to actually put your class name here where I have Sample Class, and you'll see why in a little while. It's going to make it a lot easier to find this folder later on. Inside this folder, I'm going to have the template that I'm going to be sharing. And I've already just created a simple uh, file called What Are Your Favorites? Just got favorite color, favorite food, and uh, favorite type of music. And um, what I need to do now is I need to create a folder inside of sample class called What Are Your Favorites? Because what's going to happen is it's going to duplicate each of the files for each student in the class. And it needs to keep those organized. So now I've got my What Are Your Favorites folder created. I'm going to go back to the sample class roster. And what I'm going to do now is actually duplicate my master. And I'll go ahead and rename that. And you'll notice I'm, I'm keeping the naming the same all the way across. Now, I'm going to install this script. To do so, you click on insert, go down at the bottom and click on script. Currently, it's the newest script, so it's showing up right here called Doctopus. Otherwise, you'll need to do a search in this box right here. Click on install. All right, once the script has finished running, you're going to get a message here. You'll need to scroll down and just go ahead and authorize this. Basically, what it's saying is that uh, you're giving permission for the script to run on your Google Docs account. And then you can go ahead and close this window out altogether and then close this box. Now, you'll notice you have a new tab on top called Doctopus, and we're going to go ahead and click on that. And what we'll do now is launch the installation. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to choose what kind of sharing we're going to do. So are we going to do a group project? Are we going to do individuals where they're all working? off of the same document or what you can actually do is individual differentiated so what that means is maybe you have um, multiple templates where they're uh, at different grade levels or different abilities and you can still have um, all the kids within the same roster but they're just going to be working on different assignments or you can do it traditionally where you share it with the whole class in this case I'm just going to do individual all the same Something that uh, I want to note here, though, real quick, is if you are going to do project groups, you will need to make another header up top called groups, and then you'll want to go ahead and actually put either a letter or a number in those groups prior to running the script. Now, this whole class level access, I'm going to leave it as no access because typically what you're going to be using this for is, is for an assignment in which you don't want the kids to be able to see each other's answers or, or something of the sort. But you also have the option to allow view or allow commenting on it uh, if you so choose. 
So what we're going to do now is make sure that we're going to set up a roster. So which sheet contains the roster? We're going to go here and choose what are your favorites. And it already knows that it's looking for an email column. And the column containing the excused um, field that we created earlier, we're going to go ahead and click that now. We'll go ahead and save those settings. So now it's saying, well, which template do we want to send out to all of the students? And we're going to go ahead and select that folder. This is why I recommended naming it based off of your class and then putting assignment templates after it. That way you can quickly find it. And right now I only have one document in there. And we'll save those settings. So what this is asking now is, when it's going to go through and duplicate this template it, for all of the students in the class, where do you want to save those? And that's why we went through and created the What Are Your Favorites folder. This right here is going to allow you to name the document. This way you don't have to have the student put their name in the title or anything like that. You're actually going to do it for them. So what I'm actually going to do is just copy this. That way I get it correct. I'll just have them do the last name, and then I'm going to do dash, what are your favorites? And here you can include a note for when you go ahead and share this with your uh, students. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that blank. And so here it's allowing you to preview what it's going to look like. And you can scroll down and hit run copy and share. Now, if you're not ready to share, it's all set up. I could hit exit right here. And if I do that, when I come back, it's already saved on step four, ready to continue right where I left off. And now I can hit run copy and share. So what's taken place here is it's added a couple of field headers over here. Well, the first one is the link, which is actually the link right to the document itself. This saves a lot of time so you don't have to go back into the folder. I'll show you where that's at. If I go into the What Are Your Favorites folder, you'll see that it's gone through and created a file for each of my students. And now you also note that I didn't actually have to tell it to share in my original document. The, the script will do that for me. So I don't have to go through that folder and click it. I can actually just click this link right here and it'll launch that file. Now what I'm actually going to do is I've got it pulled up in um, Internet Explorer with my other account, my personal account, and you can see that it's now showed up as in the shared with me folder. What are your favorites? It's already got my last name on there. So here's the document. I'll go ahead and edit this. Since Google Docs automatically saves, I can just go ahead and close that. Now, I'll go back into my school account, and I'll just go ahead and click on this link. And you'll see I've got the updated version. Now, I could go through and do the commenting on this for grading or even comment on the side. But one of the cool features about this script is I can assign a grade. Also assign feedback. Now the other really neat thing about this is let's say you have a due date and you don't want the kids to be able to edit the document after that due date. You can go up to Doctopus tab again and you can do an embargo for grading. So what that's going to do is change it into view only mode. It basically takes away the rights to edit from the student. And so now they can no longer edit. Now let's say you, you didn't want to do that. You can come back up to this tab and you can undo the embargo. Now the, the final cool part about this is you can email your grades and the feedback section. So these two columns will get mailed out. Now one thing to note is it is going to email it for all of the students, not just for the student that has the grade and the feedback. So you do want to run that feature 
after all students have received a grade and feedback. That pretty much covers it for this script. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or comment on our blog. And uh, thanks for watching. And once again, this is Brett for 2techteachers.com.